Hello, my name is Sherry Yannick, Churchill Librarian. Today we are reading a beautiful, fascinating book. This is a true story. It is called Ada's Violin, the story of the recycled orchestra of Paraguay. This book is written by Susan Hood and illustrated by Sally Wern Comfort. Um, one of the things I think you'll find interesting about this book is it seems like it's fiction, but it's not. It's just a really magical um, story about rising from the trash, quite literally. Um, a lot of times we have things that we just throw away, but imagine our trash could be a violin or a guitar or a drum. And that's what happens in this beautiful book. I have to say, I absolutely love the illustrations. I highly recommend you go out and get this book yourself because you will get a much deeper experience. It's a, it's a really rich book and the illustrations are absolutely fantastic. So spending some time looking at all the pictures up close would really be rewarding for sure because I'm enjoying it. All right, let's dive in. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down to the road to cut the water. Beep! backing up into the landfill. They tip their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down 1,500 tons each day. So this is where she lives. Ada and her friends watched as the gancheros, Spanish for recyclers, scrambled, carrying into the plastic bags with long-handed hooks, pushing aside moldy produce or grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. The going rates, five cents for a pound of cardboard, 10 cents for a pound of plastic. The noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Ada watched eyes wide, but didn't say much. she didn't say much. And yet she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. So I can speak to this. I have a toddler at home and she throws everything in the trash. So one day my husband couldn't find his phone and we called it and it rang from inside the garbage pail. So um, if uh, that had gone to the garbage dump where they were, they would have had um, his phone but luckily we found it sooner than that. But people always throw away things accidentally. Um, and sometimes something someone doesn't want to use anymore or it's not good to them is good to someone else. And so that's what they're finding in their community is ways of reusing things and making things new and finding things that are worth more. Each every day when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister, Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. The girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Credence Clearwater Revival. Ada loved to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Are you like that too? Ada's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada had heard one above all the others. Zing! Went the strings. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the dogs stayed close to home. The girls stayed close to home, sorry, playing with Grandma Miriam's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon they joined their cousins playing hide-and-seek or a game of handball in the streets. In time, they ventured further afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging on the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill lonely at home. What would happen to them? To her? To her little sister? She watched as the older kids turned to gaze and got to sights. Se enseña en violín, guitarra, violoncello, los sábados a las ocho en la mañana, Fabio Tello. One day when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. Violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How grandma longed to learn music. 
Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking or their parents. Ada's heart sank. Thanks to her abuela, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher Fabio Chavez had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada cho chose a violin right away. But ten children had signed up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found that there were not enough instruments to go around. And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home, but it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive violin in Catawara, where a violin is worth more than a house. So they're in this really poor community that if somebody had a violin and it was stolen, that would be a huge loss, not just for the instrument, but financially, and somebody else could sell that and really make some money if they, that they may be uh, very desperately needed. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal. So definitely not an ideal place to play, right? Broken glass, rusty metal. Mm -hmm. But Senior Chavez was watching them and he knew that he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luteras that made its own instruments. Sorry, Les Luteras that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Go Cola Gomez, a ganchero, and a carpenter for help. Senor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting and others like Tito Romero helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy, but they fiddled around discovering which materials hit just the right note. They transformed oil drums into jellies water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. So I would never uh, associate any of those items with those instruments, but clearly they were a lot more creative than I am with that. Thank you. Soon there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to play. Ada chose a violin made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crepe. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Senor Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. The class had no classrooms, so they played outside, despite the 100 degree heat and sudden downpours. So can you imagine learning? You're outside, it's super hot, sometimes it rains, and you have three-hour classes. At first, Ada and others struggled. Sharps and flats clanged and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets all hit the right note. Their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind. Always say please and thank you. Say you're sorry. Be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. So those are rules that most of us want to live by anyway, right? Having manners, apologizing, being uh, showing perseverance. Soon the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Catuero. Gancheros, trudging home from the landfill, might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin. Or the strains of Baby's cello or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sounds helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their achy backs. Right? Music can really transport us. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. And you could take a look at that violin, which clearly looks a little bit different than um, probably most of the violins you may have seen in photos or in person. As Ada's skills grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine she was first at something. So that's very exciting for her. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Catuera and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. 
So these are some pictures of some of their travels. Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. Wow, that's a big difference. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with blaring lights and heard people screaming. How do you think you would feel? Would you be nervous too? I think I probably would, just a little. But she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played and played and as their performance came to a close. A crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. So this book, um, you can see a picture, um, it might be a little hard, but this is the orchestra, the landfill, um, uh, from the Landfill Harmonic movie. Um, and this is a picture of some of the instruments. So I found this book fascinating. I adored the artwork. And I just love this story about discovering music in just such a different place. Again, this was Ada's violin. Thanks so much for listening and keep playing.